My views have not changed. I do think that Ghana has the responsibility and the opportunity to play the role of a front runner, to be proactive, to be a country that interacts with others, to make sure that as a group, whether at the regional ECOWAS level or at the larger continental AU level, we are able to agree amongst ourselves and put, in for, put forward the kind of programs and initiatives that help us to cooperate much better economically, politically, to the benefit of our citizens, because ultimately that is what a government is elected to do. When we became members of ECOWAS in 1975, it was because we believed that indeed ECOWAS as an economic community of West African states had a lot of potential for the development of the West African sub-region as a whole, irrespective of whether you are Anglophone, Francophone or Lusophone. And indeed, ECOWAS has achieved some successes, though I would be the first person to admit that there's more that we can do to push the integration agenda. And I think that to the extent that Ghana is able to interact between uh, Anglophone and Francophone neighbors within the ECOWAS region and persuade the, our colleague member states to work together on these initiatives, collaborate on initiatives that are suggested by other member states in, as to way, in a way as to make sure those are effective. We are playing that role. When it comes to the continental level, we have never shied away from confronting the hard issues at the continental level. Our first president was very much involved in driving the whole agenda of African unity, but also driving the agenda of political independence for the African continent as a whole. By and large, we've achieved that. The next thing right now is for us to be able to achieve greater economic development, political integration, and of course social development. And that is going to take a lot more work at the integration effort because as individual member states, if we are not able to coordinate effectively, we are not utilizing the potential that we have. Because of the kind of products that you are looking at, when you, we also have a significant export to Nigeria. We have to Togo, to Benin, to Burkina Faso, to Mali, as well as to Côte d'Ivoire. But our major exports, cocoa, gold, processed wood products, oil, are not traded within the, most of the African region. And that's what you see reflected in the exports, mainly to the European Union, but also to other parts of the world as well. Over the years, we have focused on developing our exports within West Africa and Africa. And right now we do about, on the average, about 12% of our trade within the African uh, region. Yes, that is a number that could grow further. But what it needs is the development of infrastructure, the supporting logistics services that facilitate trade. And that generally is a weakness within the whole of both ECOWAS and Africa. Because the challenge of our doing business with each other is that most of the infrastructure that we have that supports the movement of goods is outside of our continent. As far as we are concerned, the priorities are investing in infrastructure and expanding access to productive infrastructure because it's key to improving our competitiveness. And indeed, when you look at the global competitiveness indicators, that's the area where we have a weakness. It's not to say we don't have it, but we don't have enough of it to support our further economic growth. So investing in infrastructure, being able to effectively manage the economy so that we have a sound, stable macroeconomic environment, but we also have the supporting systems to stimulate the microeconomy as well, because that's the point at where the jobs are created.